podcast listeners, welcome to What You're Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our bookish obsession, and all the things that keep us glued to those pages. This is my very first episode, and I'm so excited to have you here. Because it's my first one, there's no guest. We're going to run this one solo. Today, I'm going to be talking about a question that I get asked a lot from friends and family that have seen my reading volume increase over the last couple of years. And that is, how have I done it? How have I been able to read more and more books over the last few years? So we're going to get into that here. But first, I want to let you know, all books that I mentioned in this episode are going to be listed in the description show note below. So don't worry about trying to write down everything that I mentioned. I've got you covered. All right, let's get into it. I'm Jay, host of this brand new podcast, What You're Reading. This first episode is going to be a solo one, but everything else for the most part from here on out is going to be episodes with guests, friends, and other bookish people in the online space. But I wanted to come and quickly chat with you about a question that I kind of get asked a lot um, now that I have kind of jumped into the book community. Um, So I want to just kind of get this out of the way, chat about this here on the first episode. And that is how I have managed to increase my reading so much. Um, So we're going to get into that in a second. We're going to get into that though here in a second. So first I do want to start off the way I'm going to be starting off all of my podcasts, which is to talk about a book that I've read recently, um, something that I just finished was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know how I feel about this book. (laughs) I listened to this one on audio. It is classified as a thriller um, where we follow a podcaster and her birthday twin um, as they are going through this podcast recording. We kind of find out what's going on with their lives. As you can tell from the title, none of this is true. We go into this knowing something about this situation is not true. Um, But when I got to the end of the book, I, I think I just wanted more. Yeah, I wanted more. So it was a good book. I would still encourage you to read it. Um, I don't regret reading it. But yeah, that that was one of my latest reads. I'm not I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it. If you've read this book, come chat with me over on Instagram. um, Because I I feel like I need to talk this through with someone. Um, But one of my current reads that I'm actually physically reading right now is The Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. Now, this is the third book in Saba Tahir's An Ember in the Ashes series. I started this series last year. It is a YA fantasy series. Um, I started it last year, loved it, got two books in, and I just paused. I love this book so much. I didn't pause because it was bad. I paused because... I wanted to take my time. Um, I have two more books left in this series. It is a saga. Um, and I just, I wanted to savor the experience. Um, but here I am a year later and I'm jumping back into it and I'm having the best time. Um, so how about to hear if you are unfamiliar with her work, she is such an amazing writer. She has this book set. And I think her only other book is um, All My Rage, which is a YA general fiction, contemporary fiction. And that one was so amazing. So if you've never read anything from her, I definitely suggest both of those um, books, her series and um, All My Rage. But I am having the best time with this book. I'm trying to read it slowly, which is kind of impossible because it's so easy to just like binge read it. But that's what I'm reading. We're going to be doing that at the top of every episode. Um, From here on out, we'll talk um, to our guests about what they're currently loving and or reading and something that they've read recently. So getting back into today's topic, um, I really want to kind of hash out this idea of reading more. And to give you a little bit of context of my reading progression, I've always been a reader since I was a kid. Um, I remember like when my little sister was born, like sitting down and reading like books with her, reading books to her, teaching her how to read. Um, And then she in turn did the same thing with our little brother. Um, So uh, reading has always been a a big part of my life. In my adult years, I really started keeping a goal of reading 12 books a year. So reading one book a month was was my general goal um, in my adult years. 
And then in 2019, I decided to up that and read 24 books a month. And really that goal was to read one fiction and one nonfiction a month. Some months I stuck to it, some months I didn't. So fast forward to 2022, I finished a book within 48 hours. And I was so surprised because I had never read a book that quickly. And that book was Bridget Kimmer's A Curse So Dark and Lonely. That's also a trilogy. Um, it's a Beauty and the Beast uh, retelling. I loved it. It's been out for a while. It's a completed series. So you can go check that out um, if something like that interests you. But I was so surprised because I had never read a book that quick before. Um, and then it got me wondering, could I read a book? a week. So um, in March 2022, I decided I'm going to read a book a week. And that progressed into me being able to read 82 books last year. Now, I know there are some people um, on both spectrums here that, you know, read 12 books, 10, five books a year. And there are some people who maybe read 150, 200 books a year. So there's a wide spectrum there. Um, so I'm not saying it in any way to brag or, you know, to make anyone feel any type of way. I'm just kind of sharing some context here. This year, I'm on track to read 100 books in the year. Um, and it feels good. It feels great that I've carved out and made more time for reading. Um, but my friends and family always tend to ask me how I've been able to read so much. And I do also want to preface this that I do count my audiobooks as reading. So if you're not someone who counts your audiobooks as reading, I'm just going to be honest, this might not be the podcast for you because I do count that towards my reading goal. And I also highly suggest everyone count that to their reading goal as well. You're still consuming the content of the book. Okay. Um, so that's kind of my, my high level thoughts on that. Maybe we'll do a deep dive podcast episode on that later. Um, but if you're interested, then I usually keep it. It's usually about half and half. So I've I'm on track to read about 50 physical books this year and have listened to about 50 this um listened to 50 audios this year. So currently I'm sitting at the time of this recording of 92 books. Um and I just kind of want to share with you what that process has looked like and to be completely honest, it's all about building a habit. I did not I went into this with a goal just to see how much I could read, what I could do, but honestly, I went into this to build a habit. Um we all know, you know, these last couple of years have been rough um mentally and just in general um we've you know some people have had collective awakenings some people have realized you know that they're unhappy with current living situations and just different things and mentally when i am in some of those states the best thing to help me decompress and to kind of give my mind a, a rest because I am a constant thinker. I don't know sometimes how to relax or just chill out. What has helped me in those situations has been reading. Um, so what I've done, of course, you know, like some of the regular things is I um, you know, limited some of my TV consumption, which honestly, I was never really a huge TV, general TV watcher. When certain shows came out, I would binge them. Absolutely. Um, but I'm not someone who follows along weekly with the show, because if I sit down to watch it, I need to binge the whole thing um, is usually <laughs> how I watch TV. So I wasn't um, already watching a ton of TV. I'm usually playing around, doing something, creating something on my computer. Um, so what I started doing is just implementing some intentional times to where I could read more. And that's why I say my number one tip for people who are trying to read more, trying to figure out how to fit it in more is to really start with a habit in mind instead of starting with a number in mind. So that's kind of my overall tip. Um, but if we want to break those down a little bit more, my first tip is to release the pressure, to remember that all of this is for fun, right? Nobody is grading us or checking in on us to say, ah, 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 you didn't meet that goal you set this month. Like it's not that serious um, when it comes to reading. This is for fun. This is if you're wanting to educate yourself on another subject or maybe a different um, a different experience, different lived experience separate from yours, whatever the reason is, or maybe you just need some good fantasy or romance escape, whatever the reason, it's all for fun. I am generally a slower reader. I heard someone say that the average reading speed is one, pay, one minute per page. That's not me. 
it's not me. I'm probably closer to maybe a minute and a half. Um, it might have something to do with the fact that, you know, my mind is constantly working. So sometimes it takes me a minute to focus. Um, but I am generally a slower reader, um, especially when compared to other bookstagrammers or um, booktubers. Um, but that's okay. Personally, I'm not trying to read 200 books a year. If that is you, I'm happy for you that that works for you. That's not something at this present moment that is a goal in my life. So if you are out there and you're a slower reader and you know you're comparing your numbers to other people's, I just invite you to kind of step back and release the pressure that it's okay. You don't have to read that many, and that doesn't have to be your goal. Your goal could simply be to just create a stronger reading habit and maybe read one more book than you read the previous year. So tip two goes back into building that reading habit. Um, reading during certain times of the day, um, maybe reading certain page numbers a day or a time per day, all of these things help build a stronger reading habit. So in my life personally, what I did is I was waking up 30 minutes earlier to grab a book and read before I needed to get up and get moving for my day. Um, I started, I work from home. I am um, an entrepreneur, so I am an event planner. Um, so during the day, I stopped scheduling lunch meetings when I could, and I would get up from 12 to 1 from my desk in my office, and I would go sit either at the kitchen island or the dining room table with my lunch in a book, and I would take that whole hour and read. Um, I understand that that might not be possible for everyone. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but also, you know, I'm, I'm a new entrepreneur. So when I was working um, for an airline during my 15 and 30 minute breaks, I would, you know, go sit in a quiet spot with my lunch and I would open either my book or my Kindle and I would read then. So I was really intentional about, you know, giving my, my mind that moment to kind of just breathe um, and read during those breaks. So that's something that helped. Um, also, when I was working um, at the you know, for the airline, I would come home and my first hour, like I would really just need to like, again, decompress. So I would read for the first 30 to 45 minutes when I walked in the door after I like got out of my work clothes. Um, so doing things like that, look at your day and look and see where can you put in 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, or 10 pages here, 15 pages there. And that'll really help build some of that habit and just stick to it. Um, the third tip I have is to learn your reading taste, learn the subjects and the tropes that you like. And I know, um, you know, there's this thing kind of going around where people love and hate <clears throat> discussing tropes. Um, but I think they're really helpful when trying to identify a book that may or may not work for you. So if you're a romance reader and you love second chance romance, then looking for other books that have that second chance romance trope in it would be a great place to start. If you love enemies to lovers, and I use that lightly because I, I honestly think that there are two different types of enemies to lovers, right? There's true enemies to lovers where we're trying to kill each other and then we end up loving each other. And then there's um, we don't get along to lovers. Um, we're not true enemies. There was an argument once upon a time. We're not really talking to each other anymore. Or there's an office rivalry. Um, and like one person secretly thinks the other person hates them, but one the other one is actually in love with them. Like whatever on the spectrum you are with that enemies to lovers trope, find something that is similar um, to that. So learning your reading taste will really, really help you find more books that you really enjoy. Um, and then along with that, try different formats. Like I said earlier in this episode, I, I count audiobooks as reading. There have been so many times where I've sat to try and read a physical book and I have not been able for whatever reason to get into the physical book, but instead of stopping it, I've gone over to my Libby app from the library and I've found the book on audio and I've listened to it from there. Actually a great example right now, I am listening to Silver Nitrate by so Sylvia Moreno Garcia. It is a beautiful bright red, like a cover with the eyes and everything. If you guys haven't seen this book, go look at the book. Um, the cover just really spoke to me and I just bought it without even knowing what it was about. Um, but I I could not 
physically read it for whatever reason. Maybe it was the the state that my mind was in, but I just couldn't connect with the page. And now I'm 20% through the audio just from picking it up this morning. So doing things like that, exploring different formats to enjoy the books that maybe you're interested in, or maybe you want to get into a new genre and you're not quite sure, start with an audio, see if that works. Maybe try it on Kindle, try a graphic novel. Um, Any of those different formats could really help you build a reading habit. I also suggest check out a bunch of things from the library. Um, I love my library. I go there a lot. Um, I always have a hold ready um, to pick up between physical books, something on my Libby app, whether it's audio or um, something that's going to be downloaded to my Kindle. But the library is such a great way to really explore your taste. If you've seen a bunch of books on Bookstagram or Book Talk, BookTube, wherever, and you're not sure if you'd like it or you've heard great things and you want to give it a try, check it out from your library. So that way you're not so committed to this book because you purchased it. Check it out. Read the first chapter or two. See if you're feeling it. Um, and then with that, um, I think you know another important thing is learning your reading style. So um, are you you a mood reader, which a lot of us are mood readers. Um, We, you know, we may not know that that's what it's called, but we have to be in a certain mood to read a book. So when it was spooky season, I wanted all of the vampire blood, guts, and gore books. But in the summer, I wanted all of the fluffy romance, happily ever after books. So learning your moods will really help you pick good books in the moment. Or you might not be a mood reader. You might be someone who's able to just say, oh, this is interesting. Pick up the book and read it. Side note, I envy you. I'm such a mood reader. And for people who can just pick up a book and read it because they plan to read it, I envy you. I do. You have a superpower. You really do. But learning those different things about you to know what kind of mood you're in. Are you in the mood for a romance or a fantasy or a thriller or a nonfiction? Learning those different things will definitely help. And when you're in those moods, are you in the mood for a slow paced book? I, I want to preface this by saying slow paced book does not mean bad book. Slow paced book is usually world building It's usually very detailed driven. It could be very character driven about characters, backstories and things like that. A slow paced book does not mean it's a bad book. If you know your taste though, and you've read a slow paced book and you hated it, then maybe slow paced book is not something that you're turning to a majority of the time. I love the Storygraph app. This is a great tool for you to use to learn more about other books. Um, People who have read the books can go on there and they can say if it was slow, medium, or a fast paced book, if it was plot driven or character driven, um, all of those different things. And they also list trigger warnings. So it's used Storygraph to kind of help you figure out your reading tastes. Um, But all of those different things will really help. Do you need a really, really deep, intense, propulsive plot? Are you there for the vibes or are you just here to have a good time with some characters that you can connect to and love? All of those things will help you pick a really, really good book. A couple of other, a couple of other things is some people need dialogue in their books. They need lots of dialogue versus lots of large um chunks of text. So really take some time. Again, like I said, a great way to do that is to check out just a bunch of different things that maybe kind of sound interesting to you from your library and kind of see what really sticks. And that way you can learn your taste better as a reader. My fourth tip is read with friends. Guys, I started reading more because I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely with my book bestie, Brittany. And I read the first one and we were like, oh, we're about to binge read these other two books. And we did. We talked about it. We laughed about it. We were texting and voice memoing back and forth. And then we started reading the Bridgerton series together. So I think things like that is really what helps continue to fuel your love of reading. I love reading with other people, even if I'm not reading the same book as one of my book besties or one of my reading partners in that moment, but they've read it or they want to read it. Um, 
and you know now I can tell them about it or I'm waiting for them to get to a certain part. All of that adds to the reading experience, the reading enjoyment, and it's really, really helped. Um, if you don't have people in your you know immediate circle who are readers, well, let me back up one, ask, because you may, someone may be willing to read or maybe they're secretly wanting to read more and they haven't mentioned it. So you don't know. So be sure to ask your immediate circle, your friends, your family, if anyone's willing to read a book with you. Um, but the other way to do it is really just get online. This is where social media is amazing. I have met some amazing people within this last year that I've been on um, Bookstagram to read books with, to talk about books with, who have given me some great suggestions. I've given them some suggestions. There's really a great community. I'm sure the same thing is over on BookTok. I'm not on there as much, but, and I also watch a lot of BookTube. I learn about a lot of books from there leave comments on those creators pages asking questions or thanking them for the video like their video all of those things really help fuel the love of reading and really support are supportive to these people who are putting out the content another great thing that i've seen um are some of the facebook groups um there are some pretty large groups some niched groups out there uh, for people who are you know lovers of reading so do a quick search and see if there's anything in there one of the groups that i'm on part of is great. Someone is always talking about a book they loved or they're wanting to know if they should continue on in a book because it's not quite going the way that they were hoping it was go. Um, and that those are great ways to meet other people that you maybe don't have in your immediate circle. And a lot of times those other book accounts have buddy reads or book clubs. So those are great ways to join. If you don't have a local book club that you're interested in joining, hop online because it can really make a difference in your reading life. And then lastly for that one, I'd say join some reading challenges. I've seen some where they do, you know, the A to Z reading a book that, you know, starts with each letter of the alphabet or read around the world, um, you know, Caribbean reads. Um, those different things really will help your love of reading too. And then when you're doing that and you're using the hashtag, hashtag or you're sharing or looking through the hashtag, again, be social on social media, comment on some of those posts and connect with some other people. And my final tip, kind of going back to the first tip I gave, is to have fun. Um, I really want you to remember that you don't have to read certain books. I know, um, you know, it's great and it might feel great that you have read an Oprah's book club pick. I have read quite a few of those. And, you know, in the moment, they may not have been the best book for me because I'm a mood reader, so I didn't enjoy them maybe as much as I could have. So just remember that you don't have to read certain book club picks. You don't have to read the popular things that are on the book talk table or the booktube table or wherever they are. Things that you're seeing that people are saying that they love. If you open it up and you start reading it and you're not liking it, it's okay to put the book down. Over here, we call that DNFing and that is did not finish and that is absolutely fine. Put a book down that doesn't interest you because there are so many other books out there that you could probably connect with better. So regardless of who said this book was amazing, what book club is pushing it, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you're reading something that you enjoy, that you love, and that's okay. With that, I'll also put a little asterisk, but also challenge yourself. I have read some books this year that were really challenging, um, some classic books, some books about, you know, American history and race, and those have been very challenging reads. Um, you know, even as a Black female, um, knowing the history um, of my ancestors, reading about it can still be triggering. It can be um, difficult. So not all books may be quote unquote enjoyable and we might not have fun with all books, but some books can still be a really great reading experience. It can add to your knowledge base. So whatever you're going into it for, just remember to protect yourself, check triggers. Again, Storygraph is great for that. If you have certain triggers, um, if you're a sensitive reader, um, just check those things um, out before you pick up a book. And if someone is recommending it and you have a specific trigger um, or a sensitivity that um, maybe isn't mentioned or you haven't seen, 
scene, I, again, would message the creator that suggested that book to ask if that thing is in there to know if that's a book that you can read. So again, I say have fun with it, but also challenge yourself um, to read something um, maybe that you wouldn't normally pick up. So with that, um, coming to an end in this episode here, I do want to give you a couple of suggestions, whether you are just starting out on your reading journey and you're trying to maybe figure out what to pick up. Maybe you're deep in your reading journey and you are knocking out tons of books, um, you know, a month or a year, and you're just open to some other suggestions. Um, if you are ready to get into a series, which I love a good series, because sometimes I just don't have time to think about what to read next. I just want to pick up a long series and just keep going. Again, a fast paced YA easy magic system series with some romance is Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Um, that is such a great series. It's a saga. So you have four books. They're amazing. Again, her writing is just great. I love everything Saba does. And she's also fun to um, fun and educational to follow over on Instagram. So that's a good one. Another one that I would suggest um, in the series category, this is fast paced spicy romance would be the hoops series by Kennedy Ryan. And that starts with hook shop. Um, so the first one follows a basketball player and it's kind of like a second chance romance then the second one follows his brother who is a um sports um agent and then the third one follows a friend um who is also a basketball player so there's such great books kennedy ryan has become one of my favorite authors this year you're gonna hear me gush about her a lot so just prepare yourself but i think that would be a great one for my romance people out there and another one that would be really good. This is a series. I've only read the first book in the series, but I do plan on continuing. And that is The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. I have heard great things about Frida McFadden that all of her books are really propulsive and easy. The Housemaid was an easy, um, fast paced, short chapter, kind of thriller, domestic suspense um, novel. And again, I want to emphasize short chapters. That's another thing that if you're kind of in a reading rut or in a slump and you know, or you're just looking for something quick, look for a book with fast with short chapters, not necessarily because it's going to be shorter. It's just easier to get through because you're reading five pages and then it's another seven pages. And it's really easy to just keep saying, okay, just one more chapter. You could really get stuck um, and finish a book like that easily in a 24 hour period. So those are some of the series I would suggest. For my audio listeners, um, some nonfiction that I think are really good. Um, this one is easily um, listenable. It really has some interesting historical context. And that is How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. Um, this book, Clint is going to four different um, national sites. Um around the US starting with Monticello he's going through the tours he's asking questions and really doing a deep dive on how are how are these tours being taught and how are they being received in regards to accurate history um, so that was a very interesting listen. I honestly got an hour in and immediately bought the physical copy of the book because I needed that on my shelf to refer back to. Another good one would be a celebrity memoir that I listened to earlier in this year. Again, great on audio because she sings through it. And that would be The Meaning of Mariah Carey by Mariah Carey. Um, you know, for my millennials out there, we grew up listening to Mariah. So this was such a great listen to kind of give some context to some of the things that she was going on through her life. I do believe she spilled some tea. Uh, there was a little bit more tea that I would have loved to hear, but um, for what she gave us, she doesn't owe us anything. So what she gave us, I was very, very um, pleased with her book. And then final, some just regular genre, um, just general books. I think um, Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang would be a great read. That one's more medium pace. It's very satirical, under 300 pages. And R.F. Kuang is just a phenomenal writer. So that one is easy to get into. You'll have a character um, that you hate. <laughs> You're in her head the entire time, but it was such a great read. Um, so I would definitely suggest that. Quick synopsis there is we're following um, a character who is a writer who has stolen um, another writer's manuscript and has published it as her own. 
the character June is a white female who has stolen um, an Asian female's manuscript that is about um, the war, World War, um, and it is an Asian story. So it talks a lot about who has the right to tell certain stories, certain perspectives, um, and you know, just the publishing industry in general. So that was a great one. Another one would be Falling by T.J. Newman. This one is fast paced. It's an airline thriller. It was really an easy read. I would suggest not listening to this or reading this before you hop on an airplane like I did. Um, but it was still really good. Um, I don't want to give too much away to spoil it. Just know that it is an air plane thriller, something that's happening on an airplane. It's a quick and easy read and it kept me engaged from beginning to end. And then my last one is another short one. It's under 200 pages. It's fast paced, black horror, um, black women slaying demons. And that is Ring Shout by P. Jilly Clark. And this one is about a group of women who go around in the South, basically killing the Ku Klux spirit. So um, Birth of a Nation has just come out. They are, and through that movie, there is a spirit or a demon that is attaching itself um, to white people in the South. And they, the demon is known as the Ku Klux. So they're going through, they're killing, it's gory, it's crazy. It's such a good short read. Um, so I think that one could be a really, really good one as well. If that sounds interesting to you, if you're into horror, again, I do want to emphasize that it does have some gruesome scenes in there. So just make sure that, you know, you check those trigger warnings. I cannot stress enough that really the goal here, my goal is to encourage you is to just build a stronger reading habit, um, to fall in love with reading more than trying to reach a high specific numbers goal. All right, guys. So that is the end of this episode. I hope some of these tips and suggestions were helpful for you. I cannot stress enough to really focus on building a stronger reading habit instead of putting so much pressure on reaching a high specific numbers goal. Personally, myself, I think I'm going to bring my number goal back down to 52 um, books for 2024, just, you know, a book a week. And then anything over that is wonderful instead of trying to continue to up my reading, um, my reading goal, whatever happens is going to happen. I hope you guys stick around. I'll be dropping new episodes every Monday. Like I said, in the beginning of the podcast, most episodes are going to be scheduled with guests. However, if you liked the setup of this slower pace, um, solo episode, let me know some topics that you might be interested in hearing on me just touch on for 15 to 20 minutes and I can produce some bonus episodes. If you want to follow along, I am over on Instagram. All my links are in the show notes. I'm at books with J Braggs. That's J-A-Y-B-R-A-G-G-S. And that's where I'll be sharing all information about this podcast as well. And I can't wait to chat with you more. Hey there, one last thing before you leave. Are you looking for a group to read and chat about books with? I'd love to have you join us for our next buddy read of The Personal Librarian. We'll be having a virtual meetup to discuss this book on Sunday, January 14th. Trust me, it's always a good time and we'd love to have you join. All of the details can be found in the show note below on how you can join us for this buddy read over on the Geneva app. As a reminder, all books mentioned in this episode can also be found in the show notes. Thanks so much for joining us and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.